I'm Merlin Glenn. I'm a technical product manager at VMware. In this Lightboard session, we're going to be talking about Kubo, which is an acronym to stand for two key components, Kubernetes and Bosch. So we're going to be talking about Kubernetes powered by Bosch, and we're really going to put an emphasis on that being enterprise grade. So we're going to talk about it for the enterprise. So let's start with Bosch. You know, our two key pieces, Bosch and the Kubo release. Bosch is typically instantiated as a VM. And it's a VM that has a couple of capabilities that we're going to leverage to deploy Kubernetes. One of those is this concept of an IaaS abstraction that it uses called the CPI, or the Cloud Provider Interface. And through a CPI, we can pretty much have Bosch deploy software across any IaaS. Today, we're going to be talking about the VMware SDDC. So Bosch, through the CPI, can do things with the SDDC like create VMs, create storage, attach storage to VMs, all the primitives that it's going to need to deploy a distributed software system like Kubernetes. In addition to the CPI, Bosch has another component called a Bosch agent. And the agent is something that's going to be embedded in every VM that Bosch is going to deploy to instantiate our Kubernetes system. And this is going to allow us to do a couple of things we'll talk about when we get to the day two side of this. So, day one, I need to deploy Kubernetes. And that's typically going to be done by a platform operator. Now, this is, this is who's going to be responsible for deploying Kubernetes and keeping it functional so the developers and the application teams that need to publish applications on their, on their Kubernetes clusters can always have that available. So platform ops, a platform operator. Now, the way the platform operator is going to actually deploy Kubernetes through Bosch, he's got to, he's got to give two things to that Bosch VM, two key things. The first of those key things is called a deployment manifest. And it's usually in YAML, or actually is in YAML. And that deployment manifest is going to tell Bosch exactly what it has to deploy or describe how it has to deploy Kubernetes. How many instances of the Kubernetes components? What's the Kubernetes cluster name? What are some of the credentials that have to be seeded inside of that initial Kubernetes cluster? In addition to the deployment manifest, which describes how Bosch is going to deploy Kubernetes, this is where Kubo comes in. Kubo is actually what's known as a Bosch release. Now, a Kubo Bosch release is going to include things like the actual Kubernetes components, so the software to be deployed, and some instructions on how to deploy it. And it's usually, it's usually distributed in a TGZ, you know, like a tarball format. And so when you take the Bosch release and the deployment manifest the platform operator is giving to Bosch, Bosch can now, via the CPI, go ahead and create a Kubernetes cluster for us. So we'll just call it K8A. In our, in our descriptive manif manifest in our YAML, we could tell it things like, hey Bosch, uh, we want to have multiple master nodes. You know, we want to have some high availability. We don't want to have a single, ma single master node scenario. We also want to have multiple etcd nodes, because etcd is the key value pair that really lets Kubernetes function at scale. It's a requirement. So we might want to deploy three of those, because it's a majority node, majority node quorum set. It means we need to have an odd number and multiple to make sure that it's available. And finally, the workers, you know, the, the guys that are actually going to be running the kubelets and running the, the pods and the containers. We might want to deploy three workers in our cluster. So all these things, we, we sort of told Bosch how we wanted to do this, or the, the variables that we wanted to do inside of our deployment manifest. And Bosch, Bosch used the Kubo release to have all the pieces and components to be able to deploy Kubernetes on top of our given IaaS. So in the end, why are we doing all this? And we're doing all this so that we can give developers access to container platforms so we can run our applications. So in the end, we're going to have a K8s API fully native, that's going to be accessible by the developer that we want to entitle. 
And we're going to wind up giving that developer keys, keys to the environment after the deployment. So he or she can interact or the team can interact with their, their uh, Kubernetes cluster in a native manner. So that's a good day one story and discussion of what, what Bosch can give the enterprise platform operator to make sure he can deploy Kubernetes at scale. But let's talk about day two. So after I've got one of these things deployed, what are some of the day two ops that I might need to take into consideration? So one of those is gonna be rebuild or repair. And this is the notion that if something's unhealthy in my Kubernetes cluster, I wanna be able to recover it. I wanna be able to make sure that it stays up and available so that my applications running and my developers accessing it can maintain access. Now, remember we mentioned the Bosch agent. The Bosch agent gets packed into each one of these VMs, and one of the key things that it does is it reports the health status of all, all of the VMs inside of our Kubernetes deployment. So if one of these VMs, if like a master VM were to fault, for whatever reason, the agent's actually going to make Bosch aware of that, and Bosch will try to automatically repair that master agent, either by trying to repair the software, uh, the, you know, the, the kubelets running on the nodes, or actually rebuilding the nodes. So Bosch is going to do this automatically for us. So that's a really great day two capability of keeping the Kubernetes clusters healthy. Another day two op that we might run into is scale. And scale can take two, con you know, two ways of, of viewing this. An operator may need to scale a given Kubernetes cluster up because of the workload demands on it are increasing. So in that case, platform operator could just simply modify the manifest to tick the instances of workers from three to five. Tell Bosch, hey, here's my new manifest for that deployment. And Bosch will actually upgrade in place that deployment and scale the workers up for us. So it gives us a pretty nice way and consistent way to do our scaling inside of a Kubernetes cluster. Another way to look at this is, what if I have more teams than I need to onboard? So I may need to deploy another k H cluster or multiple k H clusters. And I also want to partition multiple tenants in them. So I want to use namespaces, which is a Kubernetes construct, to give us multi-tenancy. So I might have namespace one and namespace two. And therefore, when I want to onboard teams here, I don't have to, I don't have to give a dedicated Kubernetes instance. I can actually have teams that are working on shared microservice projects, share the same Kubernetes API. but get different namespaces. So in this way, Bosch allows me to easily scale. I can either scale my Kubernetes clusters wider or taller, depending on how you want to look at it, or scale multiple Kubernetes clusters and onboard my tenancy as my, as my applications in my enterprise see fit. Now, another thing that we can look at doing from a day two perspective is patching and upgrading. So let's take, for example, our Kuba release. Um, and we deployed our first K8A cluster here. Uh, we might be running on version 1.6 from this Kuba release. If we want to upgrade, upgrade our Kubernetes cluster to 1.7, we could simply pull down the Kuba release for 1.7 that has all the new, new software, new instructions on how to deploy this new software and configure it, and update our manifest, and merge this new 1.7 release with our deployment manifest, and we can actually have Bosch upgrade this Kubernetes instance in place with no downtime. So it's a really huge thing in operations for us to be able to patch for CVEs and also upgrade for new feature capabilities and be able to do that in place without having to tear down the applications running inside of our KH clusters. And last, from a day two perspective, we might want to have some config control. And we can do this config control pretty simple. If we look down here, you know, we've got our deployment manifest for our, for our multiple Kubernetes clusters. We can actually check these manifests in into source control, something like Git. And that gives us a, an audit process to see who's made what changes, who committed what changes from a platform operator perspective to make 
our Kubernetes clusters either scale or create. And in addition, Bosch will actually log all these operational tasks that are being taken place so that we can get some level of compliance and auditing to see who's actually taking operator actions against these Kubernetes clusters. So really, when you look down or look at it, Bosch isn't just a tool to, to deploy or do day one activities, but it's very much a tool to do day two activities. Uh, performing all of these activities across both both clusters that we've deployed in the scenario, or both Kubernetes clusters that we've deployed in the scenario, and it can scale to beyond that. So really, what are the benefits that we get from Bosch and Kubernetes? We get lots of operational benefits that focus on both the day one and day two needs of an enterprise container platform operator. Thank you for your time.